What is up guys, Bob Gar here, and it's closing thoughts time for our $10 Mono Black Vampires deck in Modern. So 2-3 is obviously not what we were hoping for with the deck. I think it's a pretty fair uh, assessment of where the deck is in, in the metagame. I mean, it's not the strongest deck out there, but it can take wins off a lot of things if you get the right draw and if they stumble a little bit. Uh, we actually went 3-3 kind of. We had a game against Grixis Death Shadow, and they uh, just dropped the match after halfway through game one, which it looked like we were going to win game one, but it's still a little annoying that they just dropped the whole match, so we didn't get to see how that played out. I might upload that match at some point just to show you guys, but yeah, I'll, I'll still take it as a 2-3. I think that's I think that's totally fair. And yeah, I mean, I feel like I misplayed a lot this week too, which didn't help. Against Affinity, using Janna to activate Copter was definitely a mistake. So I, I would have much rather blocked with Copter and Drana, and then I don't think it would have mattered, but I could have flipped Bloodline Keeper, which would have been better. So I, I think we lost, lose that game no matter what. And also, game two of, against them, I probably should have just dumped all my mana into Gul'draa's Assassin and just said, hey, this guy can ping down almost anything he puts out. I'm just going to uh, upgrade him so I can just ping them all out, and as he puts them down, I'll kill them one by one. And ultimately, that would have worked better, but I couldn't really know that. I didn't know what his hand looked like. Uh, and I think, if anything, that kind of shines a spotlight on how bad Gul'draa's Assassin is. He's just super overcosted for what he does, and he's so close to being a playable vampire, too. The fact that you need to dump four mana into him before he can even do his ability, and even once you do, you still have to pay a mana into it to activate it, is just brutal. It's just way too expensive for what he gives you. And then I also uh, threw on elves a little bit. Uh, I think I should not have scooped quite so soon game two. I, I don't think I would have won, but I should have waited to see what he got. I don't think he was getting the combo because I didn't th don't think he had any mana dumps to play with it, so he was probably just getting like Azuri or something. Uh, and if he was just getting Azuri, then I actually still had a pretty good chance since I had a kill spell in hand and a pretty board, pretty good board full of guys, um, quite a bit of damage on board. So I probably scooped too soon game two against the elves, but it wasn't looking great either. I still think we would have lost the match if not the game. So I don't I don't feel that bad about it, but I I usually pride myself on sticking it out to the end. I think I got a little tilted after he had more or less the combo on turn I guess turn three game two I think turn four game one something like that. It was just it was a little brutal. And it was just uh, there was lucky draws, but like I said, I I should have played it out in the scene like made him have it, and I I didn't quite do that. I I was like oh the combo kills me, but it doesn't kill you by itself. All it does is give you infinite mana. So. Alright, let's look at the cards, uh, the overperformers and underperformers here. Uh, so the overperformer, I, Vampire Nocturnus, the couple times we got him out just won us the game. Uh, like I said, it's going to happen. He gives you such a big bonus once he comes out. The fact that he's 4 mana is really expensive, but he was good when he was there. Gift to Aetherborn, ah, god, he just feels so good for the price you're paying into him. He just he trades with anything, he has lifelink to keep you in against aggro. He just does everything you want him to do, you know. Uh, it's it is it does suck that he doesn't have flying like uh, Vampire Nighthawk, but at the same time, it's just that one mana reduction just makes him so much better. So I really I, I really thought Gifted Aetherborn was ridiculously good. Um, and then Smuggler's Copter, I had a, trouble figuring out what to put the last check mark on. It's not super good in this deck in particular, but it's just such a good card that it still feels really broken in this deck. Helps you smooth your curves, gets you the mana when you need mana, gets you the good cards when you get good card when you need good cards. We played the Madness off Asylum Visitor off at once or twice, which was a nice bonus. I liked it a lot. Uh, it was pretty close between that and like uh, Vampire Lacerator. Bloodline Keeper wasn't terrible either. The one or two times we got it out, but at four mana and taking a turn longer than Nocturnus, I, I didn't feel like I was could reasonably give it to that. So yeah, um, those are those are the kind of the check marks. All of those are very good. And then the X's, uh, the, the two big X's were Viserys Seer. Viserys Seer, we just didn't have a good one-drop vampire to to put in there instead. And so I kind of knew that it wasn't going to be good, but I don't think we used its ability a single time. So it's just a one-one for one at that point, and that just feels really bad. I mean, it, it seemed like, and maybe if I played it more, I'd find it was, but it seemed like it could be a good combo with Vampire Nocturnus forcing it so that you had a black card on top of your library, even if it cost you a vampire to do so. But yeah, I just didn't find uh, the Serious Year to be worth it. I would have rather just had Gul'draa's Assassin or Gul'draa's Vampire. I don't remember what the other one's called. The one that turns into a 3-2 when your opponent has less than 10 life. Those would have both been better in the one-drop slot, I think, ultimately. And then Knight's Whisper is the other one that just really 
didn't perform very well. I mean, the bottom line is our games, Modern's a pretty fast format, and our games were just too fast to really utilize it. We're not enough of a control deck to make it a very good card. We kind of want to curve out and kill them. And so, oh, I cut it. I, the reason I put an X by it is I just felt like I cut it a lot of times, because I was just like, I don't have the time to play Night's Whisper. I mean, I guess if we were in control matchups, and I think I opted in the control matchups, it is pretty good in control matchups. It's just we didn't hit that many control matchups. We, we mostly were hitting... I guess we hit a lot of combo this week. Combo and lane destruction, it felt like. Uh, and then the last X I put by Drana. I don't know. I don't think Drana deserves an X. I think she was good enough in the deck, but she did feel a little turn, a little bit like a turn too slow. And as much as I said, she almost always swings through. The first match against Affinity, they had a uh, pumped Ornithopter to Chumper, so it's obviously not quite true. Uh, and yeah, she felt good, but the fact that she needs to connect is definitely a big disadvantage. As much as it can give you better attacks, uh, it also gives you kind of dangerous attacks, because if they remove her before you know before she does damage, then your other creatures aren't going to get plus one, plus ones, which means you might attack in, assuming your creatures will trade, and then they just, you know, fatal push your Drana, and then all your creatures just, get, just die, so... She can be a little risky. I don't know. She, she She's borderline. It's, it's really hard. Uh, I do like her a lot. In some ways, I like her more than Captivating Vampire, but she definitely has some disadvantages, too. So I put the X by her. It, I mean, it was pretty close between her and just a bunch of the other ones that are all kind of in the middle. Uh, Victim of Night didn't really do anything for us, although I think it's very good. Captivating Vampire is at about the same level as Drana, kind of like an okay 3-drop, but not amazing. Gatekeeper didn't do a whole lot for us, but I think it is also really good. I think we just didn't get into situations where we needed it. So anyway, those are the checks and minuses. And then I want to talk about upgrade. And really, I'm only going to talk very briefly about upgrade paths because there's not that much if you're staying mono black that we're missing out on in vampires specifically. Uh, the big ones are Cavern of Souls to make your vampires uncounterable and Aether Vial to allow you to dump your hand slightly faster, and especially Aether Vial I think would have been pretty good. And if you're running something like Aether Vial, you might very well be able to run the Knight's Whispers, because then you have something to use your normal mana on, and you can keep putting out guys with Aether Vial anyway. And then the one creature that we couldn't afford to put in the deck that's super super good, and I think still worthy of inclusion even though we're a pretty land light deck, is Bloodgast. Uh, he has a lot of you know cool interactions, uh, It might putting him in might change how we build the deck very slightly just because a lot of times you can put him in and sack him repeatedly, so you know it might make sense to leave Viserys here and if you have a blood gas because you attack and then at end of turn you might as well just sack him for a scry before you draw because you, if you uh, if you're putting if you know you're putting a land in anyway because you'll just put the land back in and get the blood gas right back with haste as long as your opponent's at less than ten life. So yeah, things like that make him a very good inclusion, and he's just a super aggressive. Uh, vampire that comes back and so I guess that's it that's the deck for the week I hope you guys enjoyed it please let me know if you have any questions or comments uh, please let me know about mistakes I made like accidentally leaving in the text that says modern $10 modern elves in uh, the final slide of the deck tech Shh, don't tell anybody I told you that all right thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you next time Hey guys, Bobgar here. I just really wanted to quickly say, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you enjoy my content in general and would like to see more of it, subscribe. I'll be coming out with more content in the future. And please leave me comments and let me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, both in terms of production and in terms of my play and my deck building and all that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you guys next time.